Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Another Set of Eyes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the address function and, and combine it with a few others like indirect uh, rows, columns, and maybe even some data validation and show you a scenario that uh, may be something that could be useful to you. So let's take a look. Uh, again, here are the functions that we're going to look at along with uh, the option of data validation. And let's say we have here a, a, a number in cell C2159, and we want to relate it to another area of the workbook down in cell uh, F12. Now, certainly we can just do something like equals that, and it's going to give us that same number. And if we say insert a row or a column, it's going to adjust that automatically. Understood. But there might be scenarios where we want to do something slightly different or we need to make it a little more complicated um, to address um, say a data range or a table or something like that that we may have uh, a need to do. So instead we're going to use a combination of these functions to create the scenario. So first let's take a look and see what the address function does. The address function creates a cell reference as text given specified row and column number. So in this case, uh, we have row number two, and we have column number three. And the absolute number, you have your choice of one, two, three, or four. One is an absolute cell reference. Two is absolute row relative column. Relative row, absolute column, or number four is making it a relative reference. We're going to go with the number one to make it an absolute cell reference. And uh, if you want to use the R1C1 style, you put in a zero or a one for the A1 style, which is more uh, the normal convention. So we're going to go that route. And there's a last uh, fun uh, option here called sheet text. Again, that's optional. We'll take a look at that in a second. So if I close that off and hit enter, you notice it gives me that cell reference, C2. Again, it's an absolute cell reference, but it really isn't telling us anything. So let's wrap that um, with an indirect function. And indirect returns the reference specified by a text string. Well, that address C2 was a text string. So if we wrap it in the indirect function, that's going to end up giving us the uh, act actual value. It's equivalent to saying equals cell C2. So now we have the indirect function wrapped around the address function to connect those cells or to pull that information from cell 2 into our cell F12. The problem with this now, again, if we insert a row, it turns to 0 because this formula is still addressing that specific cell C2 uh, because of the way that we coded that in there. So how can we make that so it is more flexible and dynamic. Well, instead of using uh, hard-coded 2 and 3, let's use the row function, which returns the row number of a cell reference, which will be that. And instead of a 3 for the column, let's use the column function, which again of cell C2 will give us the correct number. And now we have that proper reference, but if we insert some rows, notice it's saying row C2, column C2. If we insert a couple of rows here, it's now adjusted to do C4, column C4, and notice our reference is tied properly. It's referring back to the proper area. So that's one thing you can do here. Now let's just add one more aspect to this that might be useful again in the situation you might have and that is if you remember when we looked at the address uh, function there was that option here to add a sheet text so let's go back here and after the uh, last uh, operation we put in here put in a Q1 and hit enter notice that change to a 24 because I have a sheet called Q1 and in C2 is the number 24. So it's allowed us to pull a sheet name into that. So again, if we look at this address function, 
not only does it give the cell reference, if we hit F9 here, it's giving us the sheet name Q1, exclamation point, indicating that it's a sheet, and then the cell reference C2. So if we wanted to add a data validation reference to this, I'm going to go to uh, the data tab, add data validation here, and I'm going to add a list, and the source is going to be uh, my Q... Uh, quarter sheets here. I'm going to say OK. So now I've added Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So now instead of making this reference again hard-coded, instead we're going to reference this cell, cell B5. So if I change this to cell uh, to a Q3, it's now converted out to, to a 26 because if I look at Q3 cell C2, it's a 26. So I've incorporated now data validation into that. So now I've used indirect, address, row, column, and data validation to be able to reference various areas of my worksheet to draw in information uh, based on some formula or some needs that I have. And there you have it. Hopefully it's useful to you. Hope you liked it. Thanks for stopping by. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to go to my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. Happy excelling.